In this video, I'm going to be taking images and making our app answer questions about them. That's right, we're going to build a full site application that we'll be able to upload an image to and then ask the app questions about it. If you don't think this is mind blowing, wait till you see it in action. I'm going to be building this using React for the front end, a Node.js backend, and the vision model from OpenAI API, as well as CSS for the styling. But to skip to the meatier stuff, I've gone ahead and shared the styled up app below with you via a link in what's called an acorn. This acorn will allow you to start building with me from this point right here. So go ahead and click on the link now and hit the deploy button so that we can get going. Okay, so we have the whole visuals of the app here and we are just going to add the functionality to it. If you're interested in how I created this acorn, I'm also going to give you some bonus content also. So a lot to learn. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. Okay, so let's do it. Let's create our vision app. As mentioned, we are going to start from the same point. So with the same UI in order to save us building it out so we can get straight to the media stuff. Now, by doing this, we're also going to have the same dependencies and the version of the dependencies. Okay, so that if you're coding this in the future and you install a dependency and something doesn't work and you might not realize it's because of the version, this should omit all those errors. So please go ahead and click on the link in my video description below if you want to check out what this UI is going to look like once we pull it down. Please go ahead and get that link. Or if for some reason the link isn't there, please head over to my GitHub account. Just find the React OpenAI Vision app project. Scroll down. Once again, this is the UI for building out our Vision app. And to see what it looks like, you just have to click Run an Acorn. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It is going to ask me to sign in with GitHub. So please go ahead and just do the same. I'm going to sign in because I already have a GitHub account. So I'm going to put Kubo Ania, then my password and sign in. Okay. And this is what you should see once you have signed in with your GitHub account and gone through all the steps. And then all I'm going to do is just hit deploy it. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do. And now we're going to wait for this to do its thing. And once it hits running, we can see what this app essentially looked like. So that's pretty cool. This is what the UI is going to look like. Once again, it is simply just what we see from these files over here. Okay, great. Now, if you want to learn how to create your own acorn, I'm just going to put in some bonus material here for you because I'm going to show you how to do it now. So in order to do this, all you're going to do is head over to acorn. And you're going to choose to create a project. I'm going to choose to call this React OpenAI Vision App. You can call it whatever you want and just create it. And now we're just going to head over to GitHub. So for example, here is the same project that I just showed you. Okay, so that is it. And as you can see, there's some extra files in here in order to get this project and spin up an acorn from it. One is the acorn file, which looks like this. And the other is the Docker file, which looks like this. Once again, please go ahead and have a look at these on my GitHub as I have made this project public. The other thing that we're going to have to do for this React project is create a index HTML file in a public directory. And I'm just going to give it the ID of root in order to essentially inject our project into here for when we spin it up on an acorn. Now let's go ahead and essentially clone this project because once again, I'm showing you the steps I did in order to create an acorn. So let's just make sure this is on your computer now. So I'm just going to go into WebStorm projects, which is a directory where I have all my projects and clone it. So I just clone in the React OpenAI Vision app acorn project into here. Next, we're just going to have to install all the packages. Okay, so the packages and the dependencies and the versions that we are using right now today in this moment in time are going to be installed when you run NPMI. And great. Now let's open up this project. So I'm going to open up WebStorm and then just find the project. So React OpenAI Vision App Acorn and great. You will see it's the same project. It's got that Docker file. It's got the Acorn file along with the package JSON with all of its packages. 
and wonderful. If we go one step further and just run this, so I'm going to run this script npm run start front end, which is one that I wrote in my package JSON, you will see that is the project. And it's exactly what we saw when we launched our acorn. Great. So now, how do I get it up there, right? Well, all you're going to have to do is actually install the acorn command line interface. So let's get up our terminal and I'm going to run brew install acorn IO CLI acorn, just like that. And of course, I've already installed it, but it might take a little bit more time if you're installing this for the first time. And once it's done, we're just going to log into acorn via the terminal with the command acorn log in. And once that is done, you should see a success message like this. Great. And now making sure I am in React OpenAI Vision app Acorn. So the same project, we just pulled down the same project with the Docker file, with the Acorn file. I'm just going to run Acorn Run. And this will essentially spin up my Acorn for me. Okay? So amazing. Here is the URL. And if I put it in here, ta-da! That's how I spun up my own Acorn. Now, this one will only last for two hours. If you want to get one that is more long term that you can share with friends, kind of like I did with you, then you'd have to do a few more steps. So make sure you do acorn login index.docker.io and put in your username and your password for Docker. And once you are logged into Docker, then we're going to do acorn build dash t and then we're going to do index.docker.io forward slash anyokubo which is my username and then whatever we call the project so i've gone ahead and used the same project name which is react openai vision app acorn and then we're going to do colon dev dash dash push and once that is done amazing we have a acorn image that i can then go and I'm just going to put in this URL, so referrals and stick in that acorn image here. And we've just created that link. So that is the same link that I asked you to click at the beginning in order to take you to that same landing page, okay? Or you can create a button like I showed you on my GitHub account, or you can even create a QR code if you wish. Great. So hopefully you enjoyed that bit of bonus material. Let's actually get back to building our vision app. Okay, so once again, here is my acorn up and running. There's nothing stopping you from sharing this acorn once you've built out the app too. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm just going to shut this down. Please keep it up if you want to refer back to this at any point, if you think your UI is wrong or anything like that. But I'm fine with it, so I'm just going to shut that down. And great. Let's go back to localhost 3000, where we're running our local files. So back in WebStorm, as you can see, everything is back here, including the acorn file, the docker file. And of course, we installed all the packages and ran this project with the command npm run start front end to start our front end. We now let's go ahead and work on our back end. So I've already written the script here. I'm just going to run it, even though there's actually nothing in our server.js file, but that is absolutely fine. I'm just going to get this up create a new tab and do npm run start backend and hit enter. So in order to actually check everything is working here, we're going to do a few things. Like I said, we already have all the correct packages installed that I'm going to need for this. So let's do it. I'm just going to minimize that too. So the first thing we we'll need is to define our port. I'm going to define our port as 8000. That's what we want to essentially run our backend on. Let's go ahead and maybe minimize this too. Uh, we're going to need Express, so the package Express, as well as the package Cores. Express is going to help us with our routing. Cores is just going to help us get rid of any pesky things that are being blocked by Cores, which will not allow us to send information back and forth. And now once we have Express, well, of course, we want to get all of its wonderfulness out, so all the methods and properties that come with it. So I'm going to get Express and call it and save all of this wonderfulness onto the const app. 
Now, all those methods and properties are stored here, so we can use them. So I can do app use, for example, and pass through cause, of course, called, so it re re releases all of its wonderfulness, and we can use it. The other thing I'm going to do is do app use express JSON so that we can send JSON from the front end to the back end and essentially, you know, use it. And the other thing I'm going to do is do require, we're going to do the package .env because we're going to want to store secrets in this project, such as our open AI API key that we don't want to share. So great. Another package I'm going to use is FS. This will essentially allow us to send pictures to our backend and store them as files in this project. So that's going to be something cool that I can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and do require FS. Another package that's going to help us with this is Multer. I'm going to show you how to use this when it gets to it. And of course, we're going to be using OpenAI. So I'm going to get OpenAI. It's going to require the package OpenAI. Great. Okay, now what the other thing that we can do in order to listen out for changes is use app listen like this and we're going to pass through the port and then there's a second thing we're going to pass through a callback and I'm just going to console log listening on port and then the port number which of course is 8000. So that's just going to help us, you know, uh, check that everything is working here. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to essentially show you how to get pictures from the front end, so upload them by an input and send them to the back end. So as an actual file that we save in here, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, however, we are actually gonna go back to the front end and write some code. So let's go to the app, like I said, and here is the code that we essentially got from the GitHub repository. It looks good, but it doesn't actually do anything. So let's go ahead and make it do stuff. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just talk you through a little bit. So we've imported use state from React so that we can set state in this component. We're just gonna save the image that we want to work with, as well as the value that is saved whenever we write stuff into this input. We also have the response of what comes back from our back end, as well as if there's an error, I just want to go ahead and save it here too. So those are the state things that we are going to be working with. Another fun thing I want to do is just fill this in with text, with some random text that I'm going to come up with if you click on surprise me. So maybe let's just make this a little bit bigger so you can read it. And I'm just going to inspect this as well. Okay, great. So maybe let's work on getting a surprise option first. Here are my surprise options. So three options for text. And of course, here is what I built out and styled. The styling you can find in the index CSS file. Cool. So let's do it. I'm going to write a function. The function is const surprise. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We're not going to pass through an event that is not necessary. We're simply going to get a random piece of text come back to us. So let's define that const random value equals. And we're going to get these surprise options and I'm going to open up that array. I'm going to indeed use math floor math random. We're going to use math floor to round down to the nearest integer, nearest full integer. And in order to get a random one of these, we're going to get the surprise options length. So get the length property from it and multiply by math random. Okay, so there we go, math random, multiply. You could have done it the other way too. It is up to you. So now this should get us back a random piece of text each time. And when do we want this to happen? Well, when we click on the button that says, surprise me. So let's find that button here. 
here we have a button with a class name surprise on click we want to call the function surprise and we only really want to disable it if there is a response already so if a response exists we don't want to click on this button anymore so at the moment great and once we have that random value i'm just going to set it with the actual value so let's go ahead and use set value and i'm going to pass through the random value and save so now if i click on surprise me one of these three should show up wonderful this is looking good of course we'd quite like to clear this so perhaps the ask me button can function as two things either the ask me button or you know a way to clear this so i'm going to write another function called clear and if we click on the button here so if there is a response already so a response from the api from openai or there's an error this means or then we can show the button that says the words clear and if we click on it we call the function to clear okay great and if we want to clear this the things we will need to do is clear all the four states so set image i'm going to be null then let's have set value set response and set error as empty strings too cool Now let's work on actually saving the value to state for when we change the input. So this is easy. We're just going to find the on change on the input. And all I'm going to do is get the event. And when we interact with this, I'm going to get the value and just pass through e target value. And that will be saved to state. So that's another way we are now changing the value. Okay, so if I delete all this, I can type in my own, but that value is being changed to state. Wonderful. So this is looking good. Now, in order to ask something, well, we're going to have to write some pretty long functions for this. First off, however, I think we should start off with actually uploading the image. So we're going to write two functions, one to upload the image essentially to our app and one to analyze the image once we already have the image. So let's go ahead and do that here. I'm just going to write const upload image. We are going to use E because we are going to use the E target. And let's start off fresh. So each time we upload an image, I'm going to just clear the response in case, you know, something's come back from the API. We always want to start fresh. And now I'm going to define form data and we're going to create a new form data. Okay, so just like that, we're going to append that image to it. You can, of course, append as much information as possible to this form. That's kind of why I created a form data object. Okay, it's up to you. We're just going to append one thing, and that is the image. So I'm going to go ahead and call it image, or you can call it file, maybe to be more precise, because we are getting the e target files and getting the first one. And by that, I mean here so whenever we upload an image we want to essentially get the files and get that first one so let's do it maybe let's go ahead and console log e target files and when we interact with that label so upload an image is what we interacted with the input is what we need to essentially listen up for changes on So on change of this, I'm just going to call the function upload image that we have just written here. So let's save this and I'm going to get up my console. Okay, and we can clear this and maybe just move this up here. And upload an image of a cat. We get that file. Okay, we get the file name. We also get a bunch more information such as the type, the size of it and so on. So this is great. Next, let's also maybe go ahead and save this to state. So let's do set image and I'm just going to pass through e target files as that is the object that we want to save there. Okay, and then once we've done that, I'm going to get e target value and just set it to null. Wonderful. 
So we've now saved that image, or essentially we've saved this to be more precise, to state. We've saved it as the image. So now let's send it over to our backend. So back in the upload image function, I'm just going to use try, and then we're going to catch any errors, set error. Well, I, I think we're just going to set an error that is something didn't work. Please try again. Of course, you can be way more precise with your errors uh, if you want. This is not really something that I'm going to do. We can see what the actual error is if you want, though, for dev purposes. It's just console error it out if that's something you want to see. So, cool. Now, what are we going to try? Well, we're going to try a post to our backend. So, let's go ahead and decide what we're going to do. Well, we're going to make this a post method. And as the body, we're just going to send over the form data. And, okay. So now let's go ahead and do it. We're going to use await fetch. Uh, and then, of course, we use the await keyword, which means we need to make this an async function, just like so. And we're going to fetch, but we're going to have to write a root for this. So let's go ahead and define it here. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to write app post as it's a post method and then the path for this i'm going to choose to call this upload okay we've got the request and the response and now i'm going to use fs and multer so let's actually define our storage const storage this is just taken from the multer documentation the destination of where we want to store this stuff is not in uploads it's actually let's store it in the public directory so this one right here public that i have in here already that i previously made okay that's where we want to store these images great and the file name of this thank you tab nine uh, again we can choose to call this whatever we wish uh, we can just have the original file name Or just because, you know, we might see more than one file of the same name, I'm going to use date now and call it to get the latest date and then just add a dash as well to it. Okay, cool. So now we've defined even what the file is going to be called once it's uploaded here. But don't worry, I'm going to show you this when the time comes. So we've defined our storage or more specifically where we're going to store these pictures. And now let's define the upload. Again, this is just taken from the documentation. Uh, it's a single file. Cool. And now we also want to essentially, well, let's, let's get that file path to the image first. So I'm going to use this function upload, pass through the request and response and the error. And if there's an error, instance of multer error. I'm going to return res status. Well, errors are 500. And then we're just going to return the actual error itself. Else, if there's just an error, well, in fact, maybe let's just have error in general. We're going to return the error, right? That's all we need to do. So if there's an error, return res status 500 and the error. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get that request file path and I'm going to save it as something so we can use it globally in this. So I have to do this outside of here and I'm just going to save it to here, which at the moment file path is nothing, but we're going to override it, which is why I use let to this. So rec file path, whatever that comes back with is going to be saved to file path and saved globally in this file. And just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to console log the file path here. Cool. So now let's see if this works. This should essentially save pictures into the public directory, but we'll see. So let's try it. So let's go back in here. I'm going to await fetch 
And now let's put in the URL for this. So HTTP localhost forward slash upload. And we're just going to pass through the options just like that. So localhost 8000. And just make sure that upload is spelled exactly the same as it is here. Okay, because we're sending stuff from our front end, which is this, to our back end here. Cool. Make sure that it's options as well, because that is the object that essentially represents this. Okay, so let's wait for this to come back with something and let's save it as the response. And once we have that response, I'm going to get that response and get its JSON and save this as data. So const data, just like so. And we're just going to console log the data. Cool. So let's try it out. Now I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to upload an image of a cat. So there we go. We've uploaded an image. We should hopefully also display it here. So maybe let's go back here to the app and in this image. So if there's an image that exists, we're going to show this element and I need to actually use URL create object URL and then pass through that image that we've saved in order to show that. So that's showing up here. We've uploaded an image. And of course, when we did upload that image, so upload image, this gets called and essentially all of this happens, right? All of that. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller for you so you can see the whole function now. And that gets sent to here. And if we look in here, we should see the file path be console logged out. And it is. Okay, so it lives in public. We've added the date and then we've actually got the file name here, right? Because we use date now dash and then the original file name. So that is looking good. And if we now look in here, amazing. We have saved that image to our project. This is so, so cool. I'm so happy this is working. On to the next step. So now that we have that working, I'm just going to delete that console log, minimize this, and let's go back to our app because we now need to analyze the image. And by that, I mean, once we upload an image here, we want to answer questions about it. So we're going to use the value of this, of course. So let's go ahead and write a function. I'm going to do so here. Const, let's call this analyze image, just like that. Maybe let's make it a bit bigger. Once again, I'm just going to clear this. So set response. I'm going to set it to an empty string. Make sure to spell response correctly. Now, let's write some error messages. If there's no image, okay, so no image has been uploaded and we click this button here, of course, we want there to be an error, right? So we're going to set error. Let's do please upload an image first. Okay, or you can have whatever you wish. Error must have an existing image. Uh, tab 9 is going to overdrive suggesting of stuff. So that was pretty cool. And I'm just going to return out of this. However, if there is an image, we're going to do try and catch once more. So try, we're going to catch any error. We're going to console error the error. I'm going to set error. Set, we can do it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's fine. Something didn't work. Please try again. And this time we need to send over the text. So in other words, the value that we're storing here to our open AI along with the image, right? But we already have the image in the back end. So that's going to save us a bunch of trouble. So what are we going to do? Well, first off, let's define our options once more. Uh, the method it's going to be post. The message, what well, is going to be JSON. So let's go ahead and use JSON stringify. And we're going to pass through an object. So we're going to get the message of, we're, going to, we're essentially making it an object and we're going to pass through the message with a value so that we can pick it out easier. Next, we're also going to pass through headers and we're going to pass through content type application JSON. 
Great. So after we've defined our options, so our options end here, we're going to const response fetch. Uh, and yeah, we can have analyze, we can have vision, you can have whatever you wish. And we're passing through those options we defined. Of course, this is an async function, so we're going to use the await keyword, which means we need to use the async keyword here, as this cannot live in a function that is not async. And once we get that response, once again, we need to get its JSON uh, and let's save this as data. So data just like so. And that data, well, at the moment, I'm just going to console it out, okay, so that we can see what is going on. So now let's write an endpoint, a post, so app post vision, thank you very much, tab nine, you've taken the words right in my mouth because this is the endpoint and it is an async function. Now we're going to do try and of course once again we're going to catch any errors, console error error and what are we going to try? We're going to do a few things here. Um, let's go ahead and maybe head over to OpenAI so that we can get this documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and click Menu, API, Docs. And then we're going to find Vision. So of course, this is the latest at time of recording. That's why I've gone ahead and used this specific version. Okay, if, there's, if something is not working, make sure this is the version you have in here or just change it. Cool, let's continue. So all I'm actually gonna do is take this. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. I'm essentially gonna copy all of this inside that async function, go back here and paste it. So please do the same in order to have the same as I have here, or if that documentation doesn't exist anymore, you're gonna await OpenAI chat completions, create and pass through this object. Of course, OpenAI has to be defined up here. So let's go ahead and define it, const OpenAI equals, and we're gonna get new OpenAI, so we've already imported it here, and we're gonna pass through our API key. So our API key, well, this is actually an object, uh, you need to write API key like this, and then you're going to just paste in your API key. I'm going to save it in a .env file, so I'm going to do process env open AI API key, and then here I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be a .env file. Okay, so I've just added that here, and I can now define my key. So my open AI key. I've gone ahead and got this from OpenAI. Please go ahead and make sure to, of course, use your own. I will be disabling this one, but all you're gonna do is go to login and get your API key. So go ahead and go to API keys and just create a new key right here. Great, okay, and that's really it. So let's go back here. Once again, the model that we're going to be using is GPT-4 Vision Preview. The messages that we're going to pass through, the first one is role user. We've got the text type, the text. Um, well, we're going to pass this through from the request body message, okay, as that is essentially our object here, a request body message, so that we can get the value, okay? The type is going to be an image URL, and the image URL, we're, we're going to have to not hard code something from the internet, so let's go ahead and delete that. And in fact, I'm just going to delete this whole object. I'm going to do back ticks, and up here, I'm going to also use the package fs, and we're going to use a method from it called read file sync. I'm going to pass through the file path, so essentially this that we stored up here, so essentially the path to this image right here, and then we're also going to pass through base64. And now let's save this as const image as base64, as that's what we needed to convert it to. And now that we have that, I can essentially use data image PNG base 64 
and then we're just going to use the dollar sign and curly braces so we can pass through that code like so. So essentially this will end up being a string or an image URL. Great, so let's try it out. I'm going to save this. Of course, we're console logging the response choices here. And now back here, where do we want to call this function? Well, I guess when we click on the Ask Me button. So let's go ahead and find that button. Here it is, Ask Me. So now let's upload a picture of a cat. And is the cat wearing a hat? And then ask me, and now let's wait, and let's have a look in here. So amazing, that cat image has been uploaded. And if we look in here, okay, we get, at the moment, we are just console logging the response choices. This is what comes back. We get the message or assistant contact. No, the cat in the image is not wearing a hat. So that's essentially what we want to return, right? So let's go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and send that over. I'm going to use res send response. So essentially just here in order to send back this whole object. And this just means that back in here, I'm just going to minimize that for now. That is what data should be. And let's actually save that to the app. So all I'm going to do is use set response and save the data. However, I don't want that whole object really, right? I want to get this object's message content. So let's go into the object and get message. And then let's go into that object and get the content. And that's what I want to save as the response. And don't forget to await this. And now we can just put the response in here. So let's get rid of that. So we can see it. So let's try again. Let's upload an image of a cat. Is the cat a black cat? Ask me. And now let's wait. No, the cat in the image is not a black cat. Okay, so great. We are seeing that message come back is a bit cut off, but you get the idea. So we've just created an app that will allow us to ask any questions about images that we upload. Okay, and once we've done that, once we get a response, we clear it so that we can start fresh. Amazing. So I hope this was useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have loved teaching you this. Please improve on this. Take it, make it your own. Like the options really are up to you about how you can take this project and turn it into something awesome.